The Vampiro vs Sting rivalry in WCW has been one of the most requested topics on this channel over the past year or so, and I find that quite interesting. I don't know if people wanted this covered because they thought it was a train wreck, or if they genuinely enjoyed the rivalry, but after researching the public opinion of this feud quite extensively online, I think it's a mixture of both. Some people enjoyed the work Sting done with Vampiro, others really didn't, but my job is to lay out the whole feud in video form and put things into perspective, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I remember quite a few of the Sting vs Vampiro matches, but the timeline itself is a little fuzzy, so let's take a proper, in-depth second look at this rivalry with a fresh and clear mindset. Gonna be honest, from what I remember, I didn't enjoy this feud nearly half as much as Sting's other rivalries in WCW, but you gotta remember too, and it goes without saying. WCW in 2000 was a completely different animal in comparison to the late 80s and 90s, so expectations should already be quite low. Maybe watching everything back today will give both you and I a different perspective, so let's get started. This is the Vampiro vs Sting rivalry in WCW. Vampiro made his WCW debut on the 29th of June 1998 in a match against Brad Armstrong, and the guy had absolutely no problem when it came to standing out. Real name Ian Hodgkinson, Vampiro had spent the majority of his career in Mexico up to this point, and his character was this unique blend of gothic, punk rock, horror and lucha libre, and in many ways Vampiro was actually way before his time. I mean, this character would still work in today's current wrestling landscape without a problem. You'll notice that Vampiro wasn't wearing his signature face paint just yet, and apparently, according to Vampiro, the face paint that he would eventually wear in WCW was something that annoyed the stinger. Whether it's true or not, Vampiro said that Sting took issues with Vampiro wearing his face paint because the Stinger 2 had been portraying the Crow character and the face paint was apparently too similar. Gimmick infringement, brother, but it's up to you if you believe it or not. Keep in mind too that Vampiro had been wearing face paint long before he came to WCW. When Vampiro debuted without the face paint though during his match with Brad Armstrong, the Stinger was doing the whole Wolfpack thing. Vampiro would then finish up his commitments in Mexico before beginning a full time run with WCW beginning in March of 1999. During these early days of his WCW run, Vampiro portrayed a babyface and no matter what you may think of the guy, it can't be said that he wasn't good in the ring. Vampiro's in ring ability should never be in question and the character he had going on was great also. He had everything it took to succeed, especially in 1999 and beyond. The only problem was, he was working for WCW and WCW was entering its most troublesome time period. You can only think about the things a character like Vampiro could have achieved in WWF's Attitude Era. Vampiro turned heel and he formed a group with Raven and the ICP named the Negro Ward, but they'd eventually get renamed to the Deadpool. The group only lasted for a few months and they disbanded when Raven left the company and the ICP had to go on tour. Vampiro couldn't come down to the ring with ICP music anymore, and so the company asked him for entrance music suggestions. Vampiro would go one step beyond by not only having the Misfits provide new entrance music, but the band would actually get involved in WCW television and become part of WCW for a few months. This was where the more recognisable Vampiro face paint came from, his association with the Misfits band. Let's skip ahead then to the year 2000 when Vampiro would begin working with the man called Sting. At Uncensored 2000, Sting took on Lex Luger in a lumberjack match, and Vampiro served as a lumberjack for the Stinger. Vampiro ended up jumping into the ring when Luger lifted Sting up for the torture rack, and Vampiro's interference led to Sting winning the match. Sting embraced Vampiro afterwards, and Mark Madden said on commentary that Sting might have a friend in Vampiro who'll always look out for him. Mike Tanay called this alliance the Brothers in Paint, and this alliance between Sting and Vampiro would lead to a storyline playing out on TV. The next night on Monday Nitro, Vampiro had a match against Lex Luger, and when Ric Flair got involved, Sting came out to help his new partner. Vampiro returned the favour a little later on during Sting's match with Flair, and so it looked like Flair and Luger, known as Team Package, were going to be the main enemies of this new tag team. The following week, the Brothers in Paint faced Team Package on Monday Nitro, 
In this Nitro was one of WCW's special Spring Break episodes where the whole show would take place outdoors. This one happened outside the Sheridan Hotel in South Padre Island, and the match that took place between Vampiro, Sting, Luger and Flair was actually a whole lot of fun, but that could be because I'm a sucker for these Spring Break shows. Luger and Sting fight by the pool and Lex ends up getting backdropped into the water. The total package then gets his head dunked into some salsa and some nachos. And while the action inside the ring looks pretty serious with Vampiro finding himself locked in a figure 4, Luger and Sting go to the beach where they fight with inflatable animals and rubber rings. Eventually Sting and Luger make it down to the ocean and Luger takes a pile driver. It's ridiculous, but during this time period of WCW it actually turns out to be one of the most fun things about this show. Two weeks later the WCW reboot takes place where all the championships get stripped and Vince Russo promises a new era for World Championship Wrestling. Russo announced in the ring that WCW wasn't going to be all about the old guard anymore and that old guard included the stinger. Vampiro, on the other hand, was seen by Russo as a young talent that could go very far in WCW and therefore Vampiro became part of the new blood. Later in the night, during Sting's second match of the evening, Vampiro attacked the icon showing his allegiance to the New Blood while also ending the Brothers in Pain tag team. Spring Stampede 2000 was used to dish out the title belts to new champions and the Stinger and Vampiro were included in a US title tournament. The two men would meet each other in the semi-finals. Not only was this Sting vs Vampiro, but it was the Millionaires Club vs the New Blood, a theme that would run throughout the entire pay-per-view. Russo and Bischoff said guys like Sting had gotten soft because of the money they were paid during WCW's heyday, and now it was time for these old timers to prove that they could still go, and if they couldn't, well, these young and hungry superstars like Vampiro would be taking their spots. Vampiro starts off strong here and he doesn't give Sting a chance to take his jacket off. He throws everything he has at the Stinger but the icon ends up absorbing the shots and Vampiro gets floored. The fight goes to the outside where Vampiro trips up over some wires but it isn't a big deal. Sting hits a chair shot, he hits a splash back inside the ring, and so far Vampiro isn't looking like Sting's equal at all. The fight again goes to the outside and Vampiro dodges a Stinger splash, resulting in Sting hitting the guardrail, and from here Vampiro gets a chance to show what he can do. Vampiro uses a chair on the outside, he hits a standing sidekick, and back inside the ropes, Sting gets nailed with a shoulder block followed by a back suplex. Vampiro then hits a body slam before heading to the top rope, Vampiro jumps off, and Sting I think was supposed to hit a powerbomb here but the timing was off just a little bit. Sting hits a scorpion death drop to put Vampiro back down and then we see the finish, Sting wins via submission. Honestly, this was absolutely nothing to write home about. Sting goes on to face Scotty Steiner in the tournament finals and during this match, Vampiro appears from under the ring and Sting gets dragged down. When the Stinger re-emerges, we see that he's been busted open. Scotty takes advantage, we see the Steiner recliner and Scott becomes the new US champion thanks to Vampiro. The next night on Monday Nitro, Vampiro got some promo time to explain his actions. Vampiro wants to talk directly to Sting. He says that his brother in pain knows nothing about the word pain, even after what happened when Vampiro dragged the icon under the ring at Spring Stampede. Sting still doesn't know a thing about pain. Vampiro says he tasted Sting's blood while underneath the ring but he also smelled fear. A match is then announced, Sting vs Vampiro at Slamboree, and Vampiro promises to devour his opponent at the pay per view and he's gonna strip Sting of his humanity. It can't be overlooked here either, Vampiro on the mic was just… I don't know, it, it feels like he wasn't as good as what he could have been, if that makes sense. It feels like the character just lends itself to great promos but his delivery just wasn't great. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is, Vampiro looks great, the gimmick itself is great, but there's something really missing here and the promo suffers because of it. Sting interrupts his slamboree opponent by descending into the ring at high speed, and Sting absolutely destroys Vampiro with his baseball bat. Sting grabs a mic and he says Vampiro looks like someone just walked all over his grave. Vampiro continues to take a beating, while Sting says he learned pain from guys like Nature Boy Ric Flair and Lex Luger, 
And as for Vampiro, well, Vampiro is just a boy who's standing in Sting's turf. The following week, Nitro kicked off with Sting and Vampiro fighting in the backstage area. Sting gets the upper hand and he walks away, but then Vampiro comes back with a metal pipe and Sting gets wiped out. A little later on, Sting interrupts Chris Candido and Tommy's post-match celebration by hitting a death drop on Candido. Sting then calls Vampiro a little kid while issuing a challenge. Sting isn't going to wait until the slamboree. Tonight, in the main event of Monday Nitro, Sting wants to face Vampiro in a first blood match. So, the match takes place. Vampiro attacks Sting while the icon was still removing his harness, but the Stinger makes quick work of his opponent once both men get in the ring. Again, Vampiro doesn't look that good against Sting. Sting makes it look easy as Vampiro struggles to get in any offense at all. About a minute into this beating, Vampiro gets thrown out of the ring and he decides not to go back in. He instead goes to the announcer's table and he does a cutthroat motion while pointing at Sting. Just then, a quote, red liquid falls on the Sting, completely soaking the icon and soaking the ring. And that's how this first blood match came to an end. The New Blood faction hit the ring and they have a real tough time trying to lay in any offense due to the slippery mat. But eventually, Sting gets brought to the outside and he gets put back on the cord that brought him down to the arena. People give this a lot of shit and I know it isn't what a typical first blood match should end like, but I thought the visual of Sting hanging there while completely covered in the quote red liquid looked really good. I think it comes down to everyone remembering this era of WCW being dreadful and the old WWE narrative of everything WCW doing during this time period being abysmal. But there's nothing to complain about here in my opinion. It was the best thing to happen so far in this feud. It was a hell of a lot better than the stuff that happened at Spring Stampede. The following week then, on the 1st of May episode of Monday Nitro, Vampiro invited Sting to visit a nearby graveyard for a fight. WCW decided to shoot this all with a very grainy filter and while it was a nice idea, it makes the thing very hard to watch. Sting shows up and he has to hunt down Vampiro. Vampiro ends up attacking Sting from behind and the icon takes a beating here with a shovel. It ends with Vampiro smashing a tombstone over Sting's head and the Stinger lands in an open grave. Vampiro dumps a wheelbarrow full of dirt on top of the Stinger and he walks away. We see Sting's hand rising from the grave, but the footage is so grainy that it's hard to make out. Back in the arena, Vampiro gloats about what he just done to the Stinger. Vampiro says that he's the monster that Sting should have been, and Vampiro is the one and only darkness in WCW. A crow is then seen on the entranceway, and Seek and Destroy plays in the arena. Sting shows up with his baseball bat once again to teach Vampiro a lesson. Vampiro does no damage at all here, Sting decimates his opponent just days before the big slamboree match and it makes you wonder why they bothered doing the whole graveyard thing in the first place. The slamboree Sting vs Vampiro match was leagues better than their spring stampede encounter. It starts off hot at the entranceway with Sting hitting a suplex on his opponent and once they get in the ring, the Stinger shows off his aerial abilities with a missile dropkick and a splash from the ring to the outside. Vampiro takes a DDT before the match resumes in the ring, and Sting gets hit with a low blow. This allows Vampiro to get in a little offense, and he makes the most of it with a clothesline from the top rope. Vampiro then grabs a metal pipe on the outside, and Vampiro beats Sting up so bad that the icon has to roll out of the ring and try to recuperate a little. Vampiro plays up to the crowd here, and this is exactly the kind of stuff that was missing from the Spring Stampede match. Vampiro hits a face crusher on the rampway and he follows it up with a spin kick. Sting gets brought back into the ring with a clothesline, and Vampiro again uses the pipe to his advantage. Sting gets set on the turnbuckles for a Hurricane Rana, but the Stinger hits a low blow. He then follows up with a middle rope powerbomb, and the Icon decides to fight fire with fire by using the metal pipe on Vampiro. After a few shots, Vampiro ends up taking two Scorpion Death Drops, and the match is over, Sting wins via pinfall. Again, a big improvement over Spring Stampede, but still not a match that's must-see or anything like that. It was good that Vampiro got in a little more offense though. 
Sting leaves the ring but he notices Vampiro getting back to his feet, so the icon gets back inside the ropes to deliver another shot with the metal pipe. You'd think that was the end of the rivalry, it was a pretty decisive victory for Sting at Slamboree, but the rivalry would continue on. Sting got a WCW title shot the next night against the chosen one Jeff Jarrett, but Vampiro again pulled Sting under the ring and this allowed Jarrett to retain the gold. The new blood then came out to attack the stinger, but he was saved by Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan, two guys who managed to more or less take out the entire new blood faction. A House of Pain match was booked for the May 15th episode of Nitro between Sting and Vampiro. To win a House of Pain match, you have to handcuff your opponent to the cage. Vampiro tries to lock Sting out of the cage at the very beginning of the match, but the stinger climbs to the top and he breaks through using his bat, and Sting goes on to get the upper hand during the opening moments of this matchup. You begin to think we're going into familiar territory here, but thankfully, Vampiro turns it around and he stays on offense throughout most of this matchup. This was good to see, Sting had been very dominant so far in this rivalry, and it felt this potentially career making feud was doing Vampiro more harm than good. It was really getting to the point where Vampiro was coming across as a heel underdog. You can also just completely scrap everything I just said when you see the finish. Sting puts a sleeper on Vampiro and this allows the stinger to shackle his opponent to the cage. And Sting, once again, defeats Vampiro on TV. That's three wins in the space of around a month, two of which being on pay per view. And look, I'm not saying Vampiro was in the same league as Sting or the role should have been reversed here, but it's incredible how Vince Russo's New Blood initiative was supposed to push young stars in both a real and kayfabe sense and at this point, Vampiro looked really, really inferior when compared to the man called Sting. It was hard to buy into Vampiro being a real threat. Vampiro wasn't one to give up though and on Thunder two days later he challenged Sting to an Inferno match at the Great American Bash. The Stinger was in the ring cutting a promo saying he was going to knock Vampiro out for good, but Vampiro came out and he said that Sting should have finished the job on Nitro inside the House of Pain match. When Vampiro challenged the Stinger to the Inferno match, the ring ropes were supposed to go up in flames, but instead we got this right here and it looked absolutely comical. You can see the disappointment in both men's faces, and you can also see the Pyro guys trying to get the ring to light up and it's just not happening. It's a complete flop here and it's a shame because Vampiro and Sting's promos weren't that bad. On Nitro though, we got to see the ring completely surrounded with flaming ropes during a Thunder replay. Vampiro may not have been getting wins over Sting, but on the May 22nd episode of Monday Nitro, Vampiro defeated another competitor who simply didn't lose a whole lot of matches brother. Vampiro defeated Hulk Hogan on television with a little help from Billy Kidman. The New Blood then wanted to set the Hulkster on fire but Sting came out to make the save. Vampiro takes a beating but he goes home that night knowing that he got a pinfall victory over Hulk Hogan. From this point on, Vampiro would begin seriously playing with fire and WCW would allow him to gain the upper hand in this feud, but for many it was maybe too little too late. Still, some of the most memorable stuff about this feud was yet to come, and it all started on the May 24th episode of WCW Thunder. Mike Tanay interviews Sting and the Stinger says that Vampiro means nothing to him. Vampiro is trying to play mind games but Sting played those same mind games against Slick Rick years ago, and he played those same mind games when Hall and Nash formed the New World Order. Vampiro is nothing to Sting. Sting says that Vampiro has the same fire in his eyes that the Stinger had 10 years ago, but Sting still has that fire in the year 2000. Vampiro will try to one up the Stinger, but soon enough, Vampiro will run out of one ups. Tanay pushes Sting here, saying that Vampiro is getting under the icon's skin, and Sting shouts that that isn't the case. And it's here where it's announced that this actually won't be a typical Inferno match, but it's going to be a Human Torch match. The ring won't be surrounded in fire, but the winner still has to set his opponent alight. Sting says the match is stupid, but he can't say no, he has to accept the challenge. And just then, the lights go out. The set then gets set on fire as Sting screams for Vampiro. On the following episode of Nitro, Vampiro interfered in Sting's match with Billy Kidman. Hulk Hogan tried to save the Stinger, but it was no use. A trash can gets set on fire. Hulk's red and yellow shirt gets burned by Eric Bischoff, 
and Sting was just about to feel the heat until Chronic ran down to stop the Stinger from getting melted on live TV. Before we look at the Human Torch match, we should take a quick look at WCW Thunder on the 7th of June. Sting is scheduled to take on Ernest Miller, but Vampiro attacks Sting from behind with a fire extinguisher. Vampiro is allowed to get the upper hand in this fight, and he pulls off a few signature Sting moves to add insult to injury. The two end up on the outside, and after taking care of Sting, Vampiro goes to the announce table and he sets it on fire. The crowd pops for this, and we might get a preview of the Great American Bash right here, but no. Sting puts the fire out. The excitement gets totally sucked out of the arena here when Sting uses the fire extinguisher. Still, the icon gets slammed on the table, and Vampiro says it'll be Sting's flesh that burns this week at the pay per view. I'm sure many of you have seen this next match before, and I talked about it briefly in my Inferno match video. The Sting vs Vampiro match at the Great American Bash seems to have people split down the middle, but you gotta ask yourself, what else could they really do? Vampiro lights a torch during his entrance and he walks down to the ring afterwards. And during Sting's entrance, the icon appears at the top of the entrance set and he pulls the lit torch up above the screen. Sting asks Vampiro if he's afraid of heights, because if he wants to set Sting on fire, he's gonna have to climb up and retrieve the torch. Sting repels down to the arena like an absolute pro by the way, and the icon makes his way down to the ring. This one is gonna start inside the ropes and it'll land on top of the giant screen. Both men are pretty evenly matched here, Vampiro lands a jumping wheel kick right from the get go and Sting replies with a power slam, followed by a face crusher. Vampiro is then able to counter a stinger splash by getting a boot up and Vampiro grabs the gasoline when Sting misses a second stinger splash. Sting gets doused and he tries to escape up the entranceway, Vampiro keeps the pressure on by whipping Sting into the guardrail, but Sting comes back with a low blow. The two men then fight at the bottom of the screen before beginning to climb. Vampiro manages to kick Sting off the side of the structure, but Sting gets right back up, completely unfazed. Both men get to the top and the lights begin flickering inside the arena. This was to help set up the stunt that was about to take place. A fist fight breaks out between the two men and then the camera zooms out for the stuntman to jump in and take over. It's the return of fake Sting, folks. The quote stinger gets set alight and he dives off the top of the screen, resulting in Vampiro finally getting a win over the icon. Some people don't like this because it was obviously a stuntman that was used, and I do agree that the lights flickering at the end do distract the viewer from seeing Vampiro and Sting go at it, but it wasn't that bad, at least I don't think it's as bad as what people make it out to be. Sting returned a month later at Bash at the Beach, or at least it was implied that Sting came back. He got carried down to ringside in a coffin by a bunch of guys wearing Sting masks. Inside the coffin was Sting, wearing a mask, and he attacked Vampiro and Vampiro ended up being let out in the coffin. On Nitro afterwards, the Stinger was under a mask, trying to conceal the burns he suffered at the Great American Bash, but it didn't take long for Sting to heal up. Vampiro was now part of the Dark Carnival stable, but his business with Sting wasn't over just yet. Sting's injuries had healed up magically by the 31st of July episode of Nitro when the Stinger got a match against WCW champion Booker T, but the Dark Carnival's Kiss Demon grabbed Sting and pulled him under the apron. Whatever happened here, it cost Sting the match, and Nitro went off the air with Sting getting thrown into a coffin or a tomb, and the Kiss Demon sets it on fire. Yeah, there's no defending this stuff. This sets up a bout between the Demon and Sting at New Blood Rising and it was a quick squash match. Sting destroyed the Demon, and rightfully so. The Dark Carnival tried to hang Sting afterwards, but once again, Chronic offered assistance and Sting escaped unharmed. The following month at Fall Brawl, Sting defeated Vampiro in the Great Muda in a triple threat match, and that was pretty much the end of the rivalry. I was hoping to come out of this video with a new appreciation for this feud, but it's more or less how I remember it. I can see why people like the idea of Vampiro vs Sting, and I too think it sounds good on paper, but it could have been better. Vampiro did manage to get the upper hand eventually, but not once did he pin Sting's shoulders to the mat, or did he make the Stinger top out, and I think that kinda stands out. 
It's neither man's fault either, they're just doing what they're told. But as I mentioned earlier, it just felt like Vampiro wasn't a big threat to Sting. And that's even after he set him alight at the Great American Bash. You could just tell that Sting was going to come back and get his revenge. There was an opportunity to push Vampiro here and many will argue that this feud with Sting was more than enough to put Vampiro on the next level. I agree that a long program with the icon Sting should have elevated anyone in WCW. But it just didn't happen here and some of that blame has to go on how the outcomes were booked. Vampiro pinning Sting a few times would have helped a lot. These two just didn't mix very well and years later they still aren't very complimentary of each other either. Vampiro is still annoyed about the whole face paint thing it seems. While the Stinger said he had absolutely no chemistry at all with Vampiro while calling this rivalry a total bomb. I wouldn't say it was completely awful, there's entertaining moments here and there, but by and large, you can go back and watch better rivalries involving both guys respectively. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed going back and looking at this Sting vs Vampiro feud, and take care. said was true that you'll see